Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about pretty brilliant research. Now a few decades ago Stephen Hawking, the brilliant scientist who pretty much taught us everything we know about black holes based on his theories, predicted that well dark matter might be black holes. As a matter of fact he didn't really believe that dark matter was some kind of unusual substance or some kind of a strange particle. He believed that dark matter was, at least for the most part, really, really tiny primordial black holes. Basically, black holes just like you see on the screen right here, but the ones that were created right after the Big Bang, or possibly even during the Big Bang, or maybe, just maybe, they were the reason for the Big Bang. In other words, he believed that our universe was covered in these really tiny, atom-sized or even smaller black holes that work still quite massive and provided significant enough mass to the entire galaxy to kind of hold it together. Just to give you a slightly better representation here, so here's Earth, here's Moon. If you were to turn the Moon into a black hole by condensing it into a tiny, tiny, tiny particle, which is theoretically possible, and we actually believe that these micro black holes do exist, then you would get what Stephen Hawking would call just a piece of dark matter that is holding our galaxy together. And we can actually try this using Universe Sandbox by literally taking the moon and decreasing its radius while holding its mass constant, which would of course increase its density to the point where the light can no longer escape it. And this is when it turns into a black hole. Now for this to happen, well, if I were to do it this way, it would be a pretty long video. It would be a very long video because it's going to take forever or a very long time for the moon to get to the small enough size. Nobody has time for that so we're just going to cheat a little bit and change the moon manually. And so here we go. It's so tiny that we can no longer see it. But essentially the moon is now a proton sized black hole, a micro black hole or as Stephen Hawking referred to them primordial micro black holes. And so he believed for the longest time that they were everywhere, we just couldn't really see them because they're so, so tiny. But the Japanese scientists, led by Masahiro Takada from University of Japan, figured this out. They actually found a way to, well, technically prove Stephen Hawking wrong. So it's not really one of those videos where we confirm something, it's a video where we actually disprove something. We disprove the idea that Stephen Hawking had and, um, in other words, this particular research unfortunately disproves the theory of micro black holes or mini black holes as dark matter. And let me explain to you how they did it and why it's actually super, super brilliant. So first of all, they've only used one single telescope for the whole study and this is the Subaru telescope in Hawaii. And it has something known as Hyper Supreme Cam, HSC. It's essentially a super detailed and very, very sensitive camera. And to try to figure out if Stephen Hawking is correct or wrong, all they decided to do is stare at a single spot into the Andromeda galaxy. And they decided to take a lot of pictures with a relatively short exposure because they were looking for just one little thing. They were looking for this, the phenomenon known as microlensing. Now, if you don't really know what this is, let me quickly explain it to you. Microlensing is an effect that we've known about for a really, really long time and essentially it's a general relativity effect where anything that has mass will bend light around it and if it does it in the right way, it can actually create a kind of a lensing effect, increasing the luminosity of things behind this object. Here's a relatively simple visual that shows you what's happening here. So here's our telescope or whatever camera you're using to observe things. Here's an object with mass, doesn't matter what kind of a mass, but in this case, we're going to be uh, looking at black holes of one single massive moon. And here is a star behind this. If this object passes in front of a star, it lenses the light from the star in such a way that you actually see an increase in luminosity. And this is quite visible. As a matter of fact, we've detected planets this way. We've detected a lot of things this way. Microlensing is such a powerful effect that it's used for a lot of things in astronomy. And so these scientists thought about it and they realized, well, listen, micro black holes will create uh, lensing effects as well. They'll create a lot of micro lensing effects, but because they're so, so tiny, they're only proton sized, this particular effect will be very, very fast. 
instead of having a long sort of maybe a few seconds effect, it will be almost like a flash. And they realized, so, okay, if we look into the night skies, and in this particular study, the night skies are the Andromeda galaxy, if we look at the entire galaxy, considering that it probably has a lot of dark matter in there, and if this dark matter is, well, black holes, we're going to see a lot of these micro flashes everywhere because there are so many stars out there. There are trillions of stars, at least a few of them probably will pass in front of a micro black hole that represents dark matter. And so we're going to see these flashes if we take fast enough pictures with fast exposure. And so that's pretty much what they did. They took several pictures, they uh, literally looked at the Andromeda galaxy for a few hours, and in those seven hours of looking at the Andromeda galaxy, they took about 200 different pictures. And interestingly, they only found one single microflash. They expected at least a thousand. Because of the amount of stars and the amount of dark matter, they expected a lot. There was only one. Now, this one, however, is a mystery in itself. Because maybe this also was the first ever detection of a micro black hole. The fact that they saw this microflash needs another investigation and follow-up studies. But the fact that they didn't see the thousand of expected flashes suggests that Stephen Hawking was unfortunately wrong. It's very likely that black holes are not dark matter. It's very likely that the micro black holes that he suggested do not create the effects we see that we refer to as dark matter. So, in that sense, um, brilliant study, very interesting discovery of that one microflash, but unfortunately for late Stephen Hawking, this is not good news. This is definitely something that um, the proponents of black holes as dark matter theory would probably not want to hear about. But that one microflash. Whatever caused it needs to be investigated again. So we need to have follow-up studies using very similar techniques and see what we discover in other galaxies and then find out what exactly caused this unusual microflash. There is, however, a little side note about this particular study. This particular analysis did not include black holes that could be even smaller in mass, like for example, an asteroid mass black hole. These could also exist, but unfortunately they would be even more difficult to detect. So for the most part, the moon-sized black holes are definitely out of the picture. The larger black holes probably as well. But if those micro black holes are even smaller in size and in mass, they could still maybe be the dark matter, but very, very unlikely at this point. And what all of this suggests, of course, is that we are now are going to start looking for what really caused this one single detection. This by itself may suggest that micro black holes are definitely out there. This may also suggest that a lot of things we know about the universe and the creation of the universe may still be a little bit mysterious to us because we don't understand how such tiny black holes could have even formed. If they were born from the beginning of the universe, what exactly caused them? How did they come to be? And why is it that we've only found one? However, once again, this could be just a data problem. So maybe it's just a mistake. Maybe it's an error. Once we have more follow-ups, we'll come back and talk a little bit more about this. For now, though, I'm going to keep my mind wide open and hope that this is it. We've finally discovered the smallest black hole ever. At least for now. But until we discover something else, that's all I wanted to mention in this video. Thank you for watching. Hopefully you know a little bit more about our universe and this really, really cool study. Check it out in the description below. Come back tomorrow to learn something else, subscribe if you still haven't, and maybe even consider supporting the channel on Patreon because it does help me quite a lot. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.